We're there. Oh, how was your Monday, Doug? <laughs> My Monday has been going uh, pretty fair, actually. Uh, been going pretty good. Good. Um, yeah. Excellent. You know, it's uh, it's funny that that you know we're we're. I mean, this is a topic that we've been talking about for a little while now, and you know it kind of bears fruit on certain times and certain things, and so you know. Um, and, and you know, I, I actually was sitting here thinking since we talked, you know, early today. I'm going to change it up to more so than customer service. Well, it's a lot more than customer service. When it's you think about what is great service, it's a lot more than customer service. And so, actually, good evening, everybody. Hope everybody's doing well. Welcome to, to the podcast. Hope um, y'all all had amazing Mondays or whenever it is you're, you're listening to this because we rebroadcast on several different platforms. Um, tonight, we're going to talk about, you know, customer service and one of the things that, that Doug and I, you know, we're talking about, and we are pre-gaming for this, is we see customer service. We we hear the tagline customer service. We see it all the time. Great, Lots all of folks. The, great customer service. Great customer service. Blah 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 blah. Great customer service. And a lot of people say we give great customer service, but at the same time, um. Sometimes, you know, they, you know yeah. I mean, Some, sometimes if you come on and you look at somebody and they say we give great, great customer service. But at the same time, they're posted about how they treated a client or customer or, you know, that kind of a thing. And it's just not what they're, you know, what they're what they're saying doesn't match what they're doing. Right. Right. You know, kind you know, of thing. Actually, come to the, here's somebody who's saying Marquez Wilson, were you closed today? I was calling and calling, never got anybody on the phone. I was actually closed for about three hours today. It was my daughter's uh, birthday. So we went out to lunch and I had three rigs come in that I had to fix. And, you know, my customers will tell you whenever somebody's in the store, I try not to answer the phone. Whenever I'm working on a rig, just, you know, I'm talking to somebody that's there in front of me that's actually <laughs> spent to come in the store versus actually mm -hmm. answering the phone. So a lot of times I don't, I'm not able to answer the phone, but I was closed for, for a decent part of the day today because of my daughter's birthday. Hey, um, and I'm going to side trip us just a little bit before we get started. Um, and the reason that I'm going to do that is uh, there was a window cleaner that passed away and his name was Adam Farrer. And um, I, he, I believe he fell from a building and I uh, just wanted to say, you know, um, prayers out to his family and all that. And, you know, it's the dangers of some of the business that we do. And, you know, uh, it's unfortunate that it happened and just want to uh, prayers to his family kind of thing. It is awful. And, and as many mm -hmm. people out there in PWS Nation know as well, uh, Power Wash Store Nation, uh, we lost uh, Aaron Ritchie. Um, mm -hmm. In another freak accident. Another just an absolute freak accident fell off his uh, front porch and, uh, Hit his head on a on a water spigot and died. And guys, tell your family you love them because mm -hmm. our days Tomorrow's. are numbered by the guys upstairs. And um, whenever whenever your number comes up, he calls you up. It, you're going, you know. Yeah, whether you want to or not. And it, it's actually a, a I'm going to say a decent segue into this. And the reason that I say that is because if you're um. I, I believe that we all are going to have to answer for our, you know, I'll just, I'll, I'll say it the, the, I guess the correct or politically incorrect way. And we all have to answer for our sins at some given point in time, whether it is here on this earth or it's someplace else. Right. Yeah. So if you are, um, if you are starting, if, if you're running your business and you are saying to your customer base or to putting out to the public that, Hey, we do this and nobody else does that. We're the best, you know, we're, we're the only ones that can do this. And you know that you're lying. You know that you're misleading. You know that's not a, uh, a right way to run your household, I guess is the best yeah. way for me to say. No, it is. It, 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 you're right, Doug. I mean, it, it's, it, it, it's, I want to go back here one sec. Yeah, and Aaron, Aaron was, and I did not know the. I don't think I knew the window cleaner you you, you brought up. Did he? Fall I didn't know him either. Did he fall or die on the job? Yeah, he he 
so so far the details aren't out that I know of. I, the only thing I know is that I saw that he had fallen, and mm -hmm. uh, um, it wasn't an immediate passing either. He went from the place where he fell to the hospital. They flew him someplace else, and that's where he inevitably passed. Um, unlike Aaron, who I, I don't know if Aaron because I, did Aaron make it to the yeah, hospital? Yeah, Aaron's just yeah. pretty immediate, you know. Yeah, um, that, yeah. that was the thing. So Aaron, um, and that's such you know. Not to turn this into something different, but man, Aaron was such an amazing guy. You know, he really he was. was. And he was so, uh, you know, people will talk dirty about Ray. People talk dirty about Doug and, you know, other people. But, you know, I never heard crosswords about Aaron because he was. And, and not only that, the, the man's hand is like 10 times anybody's size other than. Yeah, oh, my God. He had, he had the best <laughs> pop was ever. You know, he was he was just, a, you know mountain of a man you know and people don't realize like some of the things that aaron 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 crewed for nascar and aaron was like mm -hmm. the guy that literally could carry two tires at a time out on pit road dodging cars you know coming in mm -hmm. at, at at 100 miles an hour aaron has probably breathed in enough muriatic acid with his brick cleaning because that was his specialty was brick cleaning right um mm -hmm. to kill most mortal men uh, high lift work, you know, did that. He had the extra large harness on and, you know, wrestled cows. Aaron was also an avid gun, gun guy who, who, who did his own reloading, you know, sitting there hunkered down over five pounds of powder and a Dylan progressive, you know, loader at the same time. And he loved to load hot too. I've shot with, with him before and and it was like oh that one was kind of spicy and he's like yeah i may have put a little extra in that one and uh and we're talking like 44 40s with extra spice and i'm not not a 38 plus p you know um he did some dangerous stuff in his life and it's you know it's crazy to, to think he gets taken out by a by a faucet it, it's really kind of yeah. kind of shocking but again when your number's up when god wants you home um you're going home, guys. Home, you, know, yeah. the, the, you know, there was a, a window. You know, we had an accident at, at Spray Wash and, and you know, we had an employee that, that passed. I know another uh, pressure washing window cleaning company here in Tallahassee. And they they were literally coming in from cleaning windows one day, coming in from lunch one day. The guy sat there and jumped over the side of the building and literally forgot to hook up his, right. his board I um, yeah. fell to his death, you know, but it's one of those, it's one of those repetitive things. And, and, you know, if I want to talk about safety for a second, it's, we're really, it's, you know, it's not the steep roofs that get us as, as, as roof cleaners, as, as mm -hmm. washers, it's the, it's the four ten four twelve pitch that'll, that'll kill you because, because you're so not paying attention. It's so commonplace. Oh, I don't have to worry about this. And suddenly we step on a hose and shoot, you're gone. Because whenever you're up on a 9-12, a 10-12, I mean, you're puckered and, and you're making every step, you know, count there. So, yeah. <laughs> you know, that takes me back to my uh, commercial diving days where, you know, um, there was a guy, uh, uh, DC was his, his nickname. I won't, I won't give his name out. but. Um, he was down about 200 feet on a dive and uh, nice. just all of a sudden you started hearing bubbles and, you know, um, standby diver, diver jumped down and found him with his hat off. And the question is, you know, why was he all of a sudden down there without his hat off? Well, uh, probably six, eight months later, I had really long hair and all that. And, and I was on a dive and I was wearing a, a bandana to keep all my hair back. Well, the bandana had worked its way down and was kind of covering my eyes. And I was doing everything with my helmet to get it out of my my eyes. And I was only down about 25 feet or so. Um, but, you know, I couldn't reach up in my helmet and do it. So I was just going to take my helmet off and, and fix it. And it wasn't until I got my cam out to about here. And here's where it releases it. And I realized my brain kicked in that I was so comfortable in my environment, I forgot. Right where yeah. I was. And that's what this is about, where you forget that you get, you get so comfortable in your environment. You just, yeah. Oh, it's loosen this up. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. And at 200 foot, you know, that becomes wind up devastating with that kind of, you know, 20, well, even at 25 foot, it probably would have taken me out because 
all the air in your helmet, your helmet just goes, and then you got to try to find it, and you're not ready. And it just, I mean, it, it would have been, you know, a devastating thing. Not saying I wouldn't have survived, but there would have been a good chance of it, you know, kind of a thing. And that's not what happened with Aaron, and probably not what happened with the other guy, but nonetheless. At 200, you're just screwed, you know? Yeah, that's a fact. So, anyhow, um, that's not what we're here to talk about. But at the same time, you know, we did want to give. God bless that, that window cleaner you're talking mm -hmm. about, and, and God bless, what God was bless his name? Aaron Richie. Yeah. Well, Adam, Adam for Adam who? Oh, uh, so, his last name was Farrer. F A R R A R. I'm assuming you know that I'm name. That I know that name. Yeah. Oh yeah. wow. Um, yeah, he's been a window cleaner a long time. Um, I think hmm. it's Irish Lads Window Cleaning, and then uh, oh. of course Aaron Richie, you, you know, had his own company. And, what's that? If y'all if y'all are praying, people, y'all keep them in your prayers. Um, you know, golly. Mm -hmm. um, so, so anyway, yeah. what we were talking about was that customer service. And we all talk about, you know, the amazing customer service that we give. And you know what? I guess here's the point that I'm that I'm going to make. If you're going to say you give amazing customer service, then you really better give amazing customer service. Mm -hmm. that that is the the problem that we wind up with you know a lot of times and i'm not saying you have to give amazing customer service you don't have to give amazing customer service but if that's your pitch line hey rich what's happening buddy hope you're fighting a good fight man no you are um you know, rich has been a former guest on on the show mm -hmm. uh fights and battles himself so yeah you know, amazing, Rich, amazing uh, Richard's attitude and, and just, I mean, it, it, Rich is actually uh, humbling, I guess, is the way I can say it. He, he humbles me. Don't let don't let Rich know I said that, though. Right. Right here. Great services. 18 minutes at four percent for a five hundred dollar housewife. <laughs> His clients absolutely love how fast we can work. There you, you know? go. <laughs> and, and again, I'm not saying you don't have to necessarily give great service. That's, that's. It's just listen, that, that's your mantra. That's the thing. If, if that's your mantra, then you better give great service. You know, <laughs> I'm not going to, I'll tell you what, at spray wash, we gave great service. I'm mm -hmm. not going to say necessarily I give great service at power wash door because I've chosen not to have, I give amazing service to people who get me to people who come in the store to people mm -hmm. who, who, who come in. But as far as me answering the phone all day long, probably not the best service to the average homeowner that wants to sit there and talk about how to use their DeWalt um, 4220. The guy that called me the liar the other day because I said that on his AAA pump that, that his soap injector was built in and he, oh, you're just lying. You want to sell me something else. No, dude, on your AAA pump, th that injector is built in part of it. I probably didn't give him great service because I don't care about working. But but I'll tell you what, if you were a person that contacted us at Spray Wash and we took you on to the customer, um, you got you got absolutely amazing, you know, customer <laughs> service. And you're Guys, being called out. Your 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 hey. service on the phone, yeah. <laughs> oh, we both hit it. There there we go. go. You're right. Probably so. If you come in, you get amazing customer service. <laughs> Um, sometimes not so much. Um, mm -hmm. Oh, good, 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 Rich. That makes me happy. That makes me very, very happy. Yeah, very much so. Um, but, you know, and, and I swear, I think after my, one of my, you know, thoughts that I've had is after my um, um, term of indentured servitude or, or, or no compete is over, I have often thought about Maybe I go in there and do raise discount house washing. And and I, I'm serious. You know, maybe yeah. no, I go I out there and I am the $99 guy for a year in Tallahassee just to see what I can wind up doing. And maybe now I think with the with the rise in cost, it's probably got to be the $149 guy, which is still basically after Bidenomics, the, the $99 guy. Since yeah, you might make $12. Right, since everything, yeah, but at the same time, there's still a place. It, 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 it's still the play, Mitchell. What's up, buddy? Um, it's still the place that 
there's a place in the market for everything, Doug. And you and I have said this forever and ever and ever. Mm -hmm. And there is a <clears throat> Mercedes, Hyundai, Ruth Christ, Golden Corral. I mean, you can do the value added service, the, the value service. You can do the value added service on here. There's a place for everybody in the market. I swear. I mean, I think if I opened a value service company and did the, you know, raise discount house wash, I would literally sit there and say it was 150 bucks. What do you really expect? Mm hmm. Um, and I think you could actually kill it doing that. You could go out, do very minimal work. You could have very minimal expenses out there. You could downstream everything. You'd only do vinyl and, and wood houses. You wouldn't do stucco where you had to use a lot of, of, of chemical on there. Mm -hmm. And uh, you bang out $150 for, for 45 minutes worth of work. Oh, wait, I killed your flowers? What did you expect? It was $150. Seriously. Exactly. But But... At, what I would not do is go raise $99 house washing. We give great service. Mm -hmm. No, you're going to get fit in the schedule when the schedule. Oh, wait, you want to be scheduled? Well, most times, a lot of those, they can get to it that minute. So, you know. Right. <laughs> exactly. Oh, because they're five minutes in a house wash. I got nothing going on today, so I'll be there. But, but you know, you, you sit there and you... But again, there's a place for everybody out there in the market. But the difference goes is whenever I'm the $400, $500 guy, and we give great service, but we don't give great service. Just like whenever- well, we think we give great service, but we really don't. Right. We say we do. We say we do. Mm -hmm. And, and you know, I, I'm going to, that's why I want to change this though. Customer experience. What mm -hmm. is the customer experience we're giving? And is the customer mm -hmm. experience commiserate with the price that we are charging? And I think that's very, very important too, because if you are the low price guy, do they need a great customer experience? Do you need to have it scheduled <laughs> out? Do you need to have follow-ups? Do you need to have out the, okay, you, you know, no pay, no spray. You leave me $150 under the doormat. I'm spraying your house. Yeah. And, and now part of me is being facetious about this, but the other part of me is going, yeah, it would work on there, but it beats the heck out of the guys that are charging three and four and $500 for those, these washes that really aren't giving the customer experience because here's what I found just whenever I was the largest company in Tallahassee washing now that I'm the, the only pressure washing supply company, I have customers calling me on a pretty regular basis that are going, is it right for my landscaping to die? Is it right for, mm -hmm. you know, this or that to happen? I don't know what your agreement was with, with the, you know, are there yeah. ways to avoid that? Yes, ma'am. It's, it's hard to say, especially not knowing what that level what of engagement your was. Agreement was with your washer. I don't know. Did you put black plastic, you know, trash bags mm -hmm. out on top of your daylilies before mm -hmm. they came? I don't, it's very, very hard for me to answer this question. Well, and, and one of the areas that I was going with you before we started was that, you know, a lot of times, I, I, I see it. And it's happened in the sales world for a very, very long time where somebody will start something and they'll say, we're going to do this, this and that. And yet they don't actually do that. You know, they're right. saying it in the moment of the sale or in the moment of the cycle, or they're just flat misleading customers or they're flat lying to customers and that kind of thing. But but they give this great customer experience. Um, but if you're misleading, if you're misguiding, if you're not providing right. what you say you're providing, are you actually giving a great customer experience? Because once the customer finds out that you don't actually have that or can't actually do what you say you're going to do and you, or you leave stuff on the windows and you said you were going to do this or, you know, that customer experience is now gone and leads the opposite direction. Right. Yeah. So yeah. be mindful of what you say and how you say it and make sure that it is, it is a factual thing that you're going to do right. or that you are doing as part of your service package. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I think where people wind up dying in this industry is when they, you know, th there's the old saying is, is you over, are you under promise and you over deliver? Right. What we see is a lot of people do the absolute opposite of that 100%. is they over 
promise and they under deliver on that. You know, mm -hmm. I know you and I were, were talking about, you know, something earlier along these lines. And I'm going to, you know, I would expect to, with, with what we were talking about, if somebody was offering this service to me, I would expect to know A, B, C, D, and E, and F. Mm -hmm. and, and, you know, you agree with me, but so how are you going to actually set yourself apart if you don't know A, B, C, D, E, and F? Right. right. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's, it's one of those things. So, yeah. <laughs> yep. Yeah, you know, Mitchell's right right here. Biggest thing customers look at is, is did you do what you say you would and did you set ex expectations with them? 100%, you know? So how did you fix that, Mitchell? Because you weren't coming through. You must have switched where you were watching from. <laughs> because I find that that's the problem where somebody comes through as Facebook util, uh, user. Because I think that the comment right ahead of that was neutralize client and property protection, client engagement and education. I, belong, I thought that was Mitchell. And then the next thing you know, Mitchell comes on saying uh, the biggest thing. So he must have switched where he was watching from or how he was watching. Mm -hmm. You know, I had a deputy that had a, that had a um, has a has a, uh, a, a cleaning company here, deputy sheriff. And he was mm -hmm. telling me, he's like, yeah, I just had to go and restain a lady's port ceiling because and he even went and used um, hydrogen peroxide on it. Mm -hmm. Um. You know, that would be an interesting sales point, though. Think about that. Just just think about that for a minute. If you're a deputy sheriff, you could give a an excellent customer experience and do exactly what you're saying that you're going to do by, look, you know, um, I, I could easily write you for 25 miles an hour over the speed limit. However, if you use our pressure washing service, <laughs> <laughs> I won't be hauling you to jail today. So sign here for this extraordinary. <laughs> Ryan, I see that he he has um, so Mitchell went back and reset his name. So originally, Ryan's name usually shows up, so I don't understand why Ryan's not showing up. Yeah. So again, the, the customer sir, and really, I'd even say that mantra of customer service at this point is getting overused. Hey, Tommy, hope you're doing well, buddy. Mm -hmm. Um, that's why I almost want to say, what is the customer experience that you're promising? Right. Not just the customer service, but the customer experience out there. And mm -hmm. I think that's extremely important as well. Yeah, you have to take it to, I mean, again, it always depends on what you're trying to do with your company, where you're trying to go and where you're trying to grow and all right. these kinds of things. But the customer experience is something that, um, it's something that I've always believed in. It's something that I've always used. It's something that I've always said. It's, it's something that I've always uh, been a part of. It's, I mean, again, you know, we're talking about you answering the phone. And I mean, back in the, the early days of Cajun softwash, I mean, you know, the guys would just be like, I mean, the, I would be, you know, spraying a roof. My phone would ring and I would answer it. Right. Yeah. I didn't, I mean, and they're not, this is nothing against people that use an answering service because there's lots of guys that do that and that's a good thing to do. But for me, I wanted to have a knowledgeable person answering the phone. Well, unfortunately, I was the only knowledgeable person, knowledgeable person that, right. that could answer the phone. So, you know, I would stop even though I'm spraying the roof, right? I'm on the ladder, I'm all the way up and I'm spraying and I'm answering the phone. I'm pulling my respirator down and I'm looking down at the guys and they know that they got to go get the pen and paper. Yeah, so that I can pull out. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Like so. and Gene's very good here. And, and this is what mm -hmm. we were talking about earlier with doing the $99 wash. Perceived value is what gets the customer to start with, no matter no the matter cost. Perceived, correct? Yes. Mm -hmm. $99, yes. what's your perception of $99? You know, customer service that matches the perceived value is what mm -hmm. makes the customer's return. Absolutely correct. 100%, Gene. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 100%. I totally, and, totally agree. And it's just the opposite, right? If you are telling somebody something and then not doing that, you, and maybe that customer complains, maybe that customer doesn't complain, but you get no return. You, they're not coming back to you. They're, 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 they're talking bad about you in, in, you know, their little local groups or in their right. groups or wherever it is. So, um, you know, being to me, honest and forthright, you know, that kind of a thing, but doing what you say you're going to do and providing that proper, right. that it's, it's all super important. 
Well, and one of the reasons that we were able to sell our company for as much as we did was because of the perceived value. And just like what, what this Facebook, educating and engaging the client, a true professional versus hard pressure sales with mediocre service, gives the client a reason to remember you forever. You know, exactly. and that was where every job was followed up the next day. I mean, whenever we were out there, I was out there, even if I, me as the owner, Tanya or Ann was still, or, or the office manager, not just Ann, was following up with the customer that next day. How did the property, you know, and they knew, well, Ray did it. Obviously it was freaking on point. Yeah. You know, and, and and how was it? Everything okay? Is there any concerns you have? Do you want Ray to come out and walk the property? No, gosh, everything looks great. Blah, blah. Okay, you got the now. Oh, there's a spot on the roof. Okay, now you got that sheet we sent you beforehand. The sheet that's in pro about you know the roof cleaning that we did, Doug. You know, remember the one mm -hmm. about the wait for two rains? Oh yeah, yeah, I got that. You're right. Uh, you're right. I signed off on that about the roof cleaning. We need to give it two full rains before we come out. And, and, and see that, you know, have a walk around on there. Yeah. I, I'm going to tell you, Ryan, this is exactly, exactly, exactly right. it, right? I'm, yeah. I am not in the sales business. I am in the reorder business, yeah. right? I, I want to provide that great customer experience yeah. where they're going to come back to me time and time again. If they're, if they're, whatever that is, whether you're selling toothbrushes, you know, they're eventually going to need another toothbrush. If you're doing a house wash, they're going to need another house wash. If you're selling drones, you're going to eventually want another drone. You know, all of these different things you have to be um, in, have that mindset. If, if that's where you're, if your goal is not beer money, right, then you're, you should be providing that great customer experience 100%. and other, getting into the reorder business. The other reason we that's sold great. as much as we did was because of the length of, of, the, the amount of reorders from customers, the, the amount of, of, of time we had been in the business and we had washed, you know, for 10 years, we washed houses, some of them, you know, 15, 16 times of repeat business. Nobody right. was thinking our, the, they were our customers for life. She's been fed by the way. Yeah. We, we had uh, a customer that was, uh, I made a stupid, stupid mistake with them, but I'm able to salvage it. But anyhow, they had a massive house, $3,800. I remember it to this day, $3,800 for their house wash. And um, then after we got done with it, they're like, okay, can you guys come back every six months? You know, and like, sure. Yeah, right on. We can do that for you. Um, and, and it was because of that customer experience that we gave them. So 3,800 bucks, we showed up and we did it in one day. How do right. we do it? day we brought two trucks and we did it in one day for for a reason so i had six guys on there i had two trucks on there you know and we were just banging it out and uh, where, where i said i made the mistake is i i and to this day to this day i have no reason i don't understand why i did it as as he's sitting there writing the check and how much was that and i'm like you know I, i'm getting it went a little bit faster and i'm gonna give you a little bit of a discount you know all this kind of stuff. And, and I took a thousand dollars off and mm -hmm. I don't even know why I did that. And he's like, are you sure? And I'm like, I, I said it, you know? yeah. <laughs> but, it, but Hey, it turned out, it, it actually worked out great yeah. because he turned around and said, well, I mean, you guys come back every six months. That would be great. Right. And you know, 3,800 bucks every six months. So was mm -hmm. it actually worth my mistake? Sure. It was. But yeah. it was that customer experience and the service that we gave him and, you know, everything yeah. was what he wanted. And boom, there you go. You know, and I'm realizing that that now with us owning, you know, so so we have power wash door. And now, you know, Tanya and I also have the shaved ice business. And, and I'm realizing that. The. Perceived value like 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 Jean said, it gets the people to come up there. And the shaved ice business is incredibly like the power wash business. I mean, it's, you know, I could have ostensibly created everything that we have with our Tiki's truck. I could have recreated it for $20,000. We could have bought a, a trailer, a snow cone trailer, Mm -hmm. not a shaved ice trailer. We could have bought a cheap ice crusher. We could have slapped some graphics on the side of it. We could have used four bottles to, you know, to, to make this. 
and and we could have four uh, almost right. a tenth of what we we spent created created this 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 you know a knockoff of the franchise that we have right now well guess what we get more we serve more we're able to process more orders because of the novelty of it because mm -hmm. of the brand awareness because of people get to make their own out there and it's clean and it's not a creeper van um it it's 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 not a scary looking thing. Um, we get up there, Tanya and I are both smiling and, and friendly and happy with the people out there. We give them a cup of, oh, you want, you want four flavors? Help yourself to the serve board right there to your right where you get to make your own. Oh my gosh, I get to make my own? Yes. You don't care how much I put on there? No, I don't, you know, really, because you're going to maybe put 25 cent worth of syrup on here. The value part is just the experience. The and experience general, around it. You know? And that's, that's, it's teaching me just one more time what we already know about the general, the customer experience, not the customer service per se. What's customer service with what I do? Smile and then give them two napkins instead of one. Right. But no, they wind up loving it because of the whole experience. They walk up to a truck that has music playing. They, they, it, it's got flashing lights. It's got friendly people inside. They get to choose their own flavors. It's clean. It's nice. It's a whole experience type thing. You want to know what's funny, Ray? I, I kid you not. I kid you not. I went this weekend to help my daughter um, with trimming up her tree and some other stuff. And, and anyhow... Uh, th there is in the little town that she's in, there is a guy that, uh, runs around with a little ice cream van. Okay. Mm -hmm. I kid you not every picture that you could imagine in your head for a creeper van. This is a white van basically with some stickers and graphics and yeah. stuff just stuck to the side of it. It's dirty. It's nasty. The windshield's got caulking on it. He's got an air conditioner stuck in there with stuff on it. The two side doors that open up because he he sells it right out of his like windows. Right, right. Right. Driver I really like that tires. The doors are crushed in. I right. mean, this is the ultimate creeper van, and the music going on and all that, and it's like people actually go up to that van. I mean, <laughs> as a grown adult, I would have to go up there, you know, with yeah, my, I wouldn't let my children, you know, do, <laughs> doing that. Yeah, I wouldn't let my children go up to that. You know, I have to go up there with my AR 14. Of course, that's the, you know, the Biden one, right. The AR 14, um, you know, uh, but I, I would have to be like locked and loaded to even approach that thing. I got to get mm -hmm. a picture of that next time I'm out there. It's, it's funny. Yeah. BMW's main, you know, BMW wants to re repeat, you know, if you get somebody that, that, that drops, you know, a hundo on, on, on a B uh, on a Beamer to start with, chances are, if they're amazed with it, they're going to buy again. Gonna buy again. Mm -hmm. Mercedes owners, they tend to be typical repeat Mercedes owners, BMW owners. Yeah. You know, I mean, it's and funny. Scott, you're right, by the way, you know, a, a, a lot of, um, Y'all may remember, you know, about six years ago, I posted the story, you know, for longtime followers, and we literally traded a house wash for a BMW. And it was a classic, like, 88 BMW uh, 325. Um, we traded the house wash, gave them a couple of hundred dollars for it. And told Tanya, it's like, this is a collector's car. Eventually, somebody is going to buy it. Well, somebody bought it. And paid great money for it. I think we doubled or tripled what we had, you know, it, what, what they were asking for it. But then, Doug, sure enough, we wound up buying another BMW convertible out there for our play car because we liked that other BMW. Now, it was, you know, six, seven years newer on there, but that was it. Mm -hmm. Tanya's like, hey, I like the BMW. You know, I yeah. want to go back to the BMW. Exactly. 
Mm -hmm. And and that that's all it, you know, where, where you, you know, if you, and it's the same thing in your service business, right? If you give the right customer experience and, and, and I'll even go this way. It's, it's the right customer service for that customer, right? You don't have to give the best customer experience or if that's not what they're after and that's not what they're looking for to get that repeat customer. Cause sometimes, like you said, they're, they're just into it for the creeper van and they just want to go up and pay a dollar 99 for their ice cream. And, and that's it. They don't really care about anything else. Right. So mm -hmm. if that's the case, hey, that's great. Um, so for your business, your customer experience is, is whatever it is that you decide. But if you want to get up there and consistently have return repeat customers and um, having them always want you back and all that, that's where that customer service, that, that value add, the, the customer experience really comes in and, and helps you create those upper tickets and hold, the, hold that value within your company. Absolutely. You know, I mean, one of the one of the cute ones, I was going to do this from while we were discussing this earlier, I was going to do it from the office tonight and just wound up running out of time and, and got home and didn't didn't make it back. But, you know, our secret weapon now is Finn in the in the truck. I mean, we you know, we dressed him up at the pi in, at the pirate festival out there. Cutest kid in the world. And I mean, we're, we're teaching him how to you know, is that cash or card? Thank you very much. I mean, and people absolutely eat it up that we've got a mm -hmm. seven-year-old that we're teaching him entrepreneurship skills. Mm -hmm. um, and welcome, New Zealand. Um, <laughs> if Ray posts a video of him in a hula skirt, public dancing, I will donate $1,000 to a charity of his choosing. I'll You're send you the own. picture. You send me the thousand bucks. How's that? That's right. My, my, my charity is, is the Doug Gore foundation for, <laughs> for wayward jujitsu women. That's it. That's it. Yeah, hey, yeah. you know what? I, I I'm going to say it. I'm going to say it. My wife is the reigning world champion BJJ jujitsu lady for her age and weight group. She is the reigning world champion, took the world championship in uh, Las Vegas and, yeah, you know, I'm excited about it. So is she. Yeah. You, we gave out focus on customer retention. Remind them you exist three times. Yeah. You know what, mm -hmm. Rich, with email, remind them you exist monthly. Email and, and even text nowadays. Yeah, yeah, true. It's, it's, it's also the reason that I started the whole, uh, uh, you know, limited lifetime warranty on the roof cleanings. It gave me a better reason slash excuse to keep up with the with the customers, and it, it became an important thing for me. Mm -hmm. I love this. Mm -hmm. Not everyone is your client. Not everyone cares about the value you offer. Not everyone wants to actually pay for the services they request. Not everyone is going to abide by basic requests in terms of service. Some clients just want to be the boss. Absolutely, one hundred percent. And the faster you know this the better off you're going to be the faster but, you can identify the person that you, and you say, I don't think we're a good fit, the better off you're going to be. You know, but on that, along that same line, if you're looking at, at customers and you're thinking to yourself, this just isn't my customer. Maybe that's not my customer when they absolutely fit what you are you know, what your service is or what you do or, or whatever. And it's just you being willy nilly. Hey, I don't think I want to deal with this person that leads to a, um, a downfall in your company. Eventually it may not lead there today. It's, it's, it's a, not, not that your company will go out of business or anything to that nature. You, you might survive, but you're always going to have to be hunting because you, you you're not doing it if, to are, me I, I guess what i'm trying to say is if you're looking at, at customers in a very negative light when they're um asking about your service and it is something that you do and there is no reason to have that other than your own mental block your own your mental problem it's just a bad way to look at the customer and see and i disagree though because i've done enough now and, and and i know that you won't make everybody happy and some people oh, are some people are jack wagons now mm -hmm. and, and they're not your customer. And, and again, I, I'll go back to the faster you, you realize that the better off you are. I mean, it's, it's good to cut some people loose now. Yeah. I, but if you go did, back, go back to the conversation. Well, you're over here. Go back to the conversation that we were having before 
And you'll yeah. agree with that part of that conversation. But, and, and, but I'll also say this too, though, if you whine and, and it's not toward, and it, cause it just says Facebook user on there. If you time and time and time and time again, get those customers that you find yourself in conflict with, there then there's probably something wrong with your marketing that you're attracting those people what, for whatever it is, the message that you're putting out is making exactly. those people come to you. And, and that's not saying, well, I guess it is saying what you're doing is wrong because you'll, you'll find a, a jerk every now and then you're, you're oh, going, yeah. you know, and it's good uh, to fire a customer. Yeah, no. And it's a great thing. So I'm not <laughs> saying that you're doing that, but I'm saying if one out of five customers is, is a jerk like that, or is, is expecting too much, then it's probably a chance to, to do a look and going, why am I attracting so many jerks out there? You right, know, right. Um, Kim Hopkins. I know we were just talking about you and your husband just uh, at the beginning of the show here. So I get a mic. Good. I get I is actually starting a new day over there. I'll think it might be about Tuesday around there parts. Or is it Monday I'll tell you morning? What, uh, Raymond Burke drinking sounds more like an Australian then Kim and Nick Hopkins. Hey, she told me I had a shit Australian accent and I'm not even drinking tonight. There you go. <laughs> <clears throat> Although I was playing with my stick earlier. Yeah, good day. And yeah, it's a Tuesday there, mate. Good there on you. Go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good on you. How you been? <laughs> so, you, you know what? Uh, you know, you call a, a boomerang, it don't work, right? That's right, mate. A stick. Sticks. <laughs> I was literally out throwing my boomerang earlier, um, and 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 it didn't come back, so it's a stick. There you go. Yep. Yeah. I would like a refund, Kim. How do I how do I go about contacting Australia for a refund? There you go. Um, <laughs> <laughs> oh. That's actually like twice we've talked about the Hopkins. Hey, we got a nine out of ten on the uh, on the accent for you. Ah, get on you. There you go. Get on you. I've got some great teachers over there. I'll never forget my. I get him, Mike Nick Hopkins, Gold Coast, Australia. I was thinking about popping around there to <laughs> see you for a bit on a walkabout to the states. And he just came. Okay. <laughs> 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 oh, okay. So I got a seven and a half out of ten. There we go. <laughs> That's awesome. That's awesome. Yeah, we were. Uh, yeah. Can you fix my fence gate? My trim my shrubs. Move something for me. How many of you guys travel this road? Yeah, that's true. And you know what? You can do it. You cannot do it. It's it's all about the boundaries that you want to set with your customers on there. Mm -hmm. And there are so many guys that try to go so many different directions. I'm not saying that it's, uh, excuse me, that it's bad to go different directions. I mean, look at James Mazel, right? James washes and then he does, you know, painting and, and he'll go virtually any direction. And he's good at going different directions as well, right? So there's nothing necessarily wrong with that. But um, James, James is one of those guys that knows how to maneuver and finagle and do it. Well, he's an way. amazing For a lot of guys just can't. He's an amazing manager. Is what is what he is. Yes, He's exactly. able to find the labor and, and manage the people. You mm -hmm. know, and that's that's yeah. He's he not out there doing the doing all yeah. of that stuff. Yeah, yeah. I think he does most of that from the front seat of uh, of, of his Yukon. Exactly. And if mm -hmm. you guys uh, talk to James, don't tell him we said anything good about him. Don't do yeah, that. Please don't. Please don't. Yeah, please don't. He can feel all good and stuff. In fact, you know, his, his son is basically running his. You yep. know, watch me at this point. He's just with hospitality improvements now. So, mm -hmm. um, but no, I mean, he's figured out how to to do the managing part of this of, of this with the customers and or with the subcontractors and all. And, and it's great, you know. And and like Gene said, can you fix my fence gate, trim my shrubs, do something for me? Maybe that's something where you need your network um, on there. Um, you know, Richard's bringing up a great point here. Um, and not if they ask the question doesn't necessarily have to be a red flag, but it should raise your the tickle senses a little bit to see what else they got going on. Right. If someone well, says, you know, are, are you insured before you have 
have even qualified their needs right off the bat, right? That can be a, a red flag that you need to look at sometimes to say, you know, how how is the next interaction and reactions with this person? Are they super, you know, negative Nancy, Karen types, you know, all that kind of thing that you know it's going to be an issue for them no matter what you do, no matter what service you yeah. provide. You do have to you, you have to find those people and you have to to um, pull your line out of the water fairly quickly and just move on. You know, so two, two, two of them right here. Uh, like Rich says, you'll find someone throws up red flags. Ask if you're insured before you even qualify their needs. Mm -hmm. I want to go to Scott's uh, comment first here, though, before I go back to Rich's. Um, long as it can be in the same ballpark, you can handle it. Why not do it? Sub it out. Make a percentage for doing nothing. I make $1 million a year just on facilitating different services and taking a cut off the top mm -hmm. to coordinate. Yeah, hundred yep. percent. Yeah, but absolutely. but here's the difference with you, Scott. It's the same thing we're saying with James, right? Is that you can manage that. You know how to manage that, and you're you're you know how to make sure the subs are right and and do these kinds of things. If you're not right, if you're taking on services and you you uh, are spreading yourself in too many different directions, where it's just you and you're not subbing these things out, and you don't know how to manage those, that's where you run into an issue, right? Because now you're not you're trying to if you if if Scott is the one going out washing the building, Scott is the one that's going out and repairing the roofing. Scott is the one that's going to lead to a disastrous thing trying to run around and be everything for everybody. Unless you're just a handyman, and that's what you do. Right. right. But where you're running a company, you can sub it out because you're a better manager. That's why you create your network and you find, yeah. you know, you find the landscape where you find the handyman, you find the electrician, you find, unless you want to be the handyman. So, you know, there's a guy in <laughs> Tallahassee and, 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 you know, I've talked to him before. He's a maintenance service and they're kind of a catch all thing. But he's saying, you know, he has and actually one of my very, very good friends. You know, somebody that we go to Belize with and vacation with a lot. He's a, a handyman guy as well. He's a the everything to everybody guy. What what's happened to him is it's he and his son because they can't find you know qualified people to 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 keep you know help helping them. That you know it's a constant revolving door of of pe not everybody can go and do flooring and light mm -hmm. electrical and this and 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 that. Now, I want exactly. to go back to, to what Rich uh, says here. You know, there's a maybe one day he'll 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 actually choose to be interviewed on here. He's a customer here in Tallahassee. And I think we've talked about this before. He's a frequent watcher of this show. But he had one recently, um, you know, it really, really bothered him. But he he went and washed a building for an attorney. And it turned out this attorney specialized in suing insurance companies on water damage. Well, he got the they 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 he got his insurance, got all that information, washed the building, not a hitch came off. Then a week later, the wife called and said, Oh, we need our house washed. He showed up at the house and said, your house isn't really dirty. Yeah, we like to keep it clean. Just go ahead and wash it. That afternoon, he gets the call from the attorney who's, again, he has his insurance. He did his office a week before. Nothing bad happened. Go out. They do the house. Oh, you've messed up my house. I've got water inside of my house. Goes out there and thank God he took the pictures, all that great stuff, just like, you know, you should. He comes into the store and he's like, dude, I don't even understand. And I said, look, I said, you've got different colored shingles in this valley right here. And where you're showing me the inside pictures are, are right here. It dripped down and he's like, oh my gosh, you're right. And I said, and look at the other pictures. I said, there's old water stains on this drywall and coming out of these sockets that are under the new water stains that he's saying is a problem right here. He's like, oh my gosh, you're right. Well, sent it off to the insurance company. This guy went and filed a claim. Being an attorney, he knew exactly where to file mm -hmm. the claim on there. <clears throat> um. $9,500 just under that $10,000 threshold. They paid him off, even though they had substantial proof that he had done a roof repair without pulling a permit. I mean, we went and searched all this information, you know, armed, armed him, you know, to fight this attorney. 
the insurance company rolled over for it. You know, were there red mm-hmm. flags before then? No, not really. But sometimes you get screwed on that with, yeah. with the customers. In fact, I would say that's a horrible <laughs> example of because sometimes you're just going to get screwed. But that's an example of why. Well, sometimes you just have people that are professional at screwing people. Yeah, I mean, yeah. And, and this and is there's... why you always have <laughs> your, your, your insurance up to date and why you always run you know, a business like a you're, you're always going to have people that take advantage of other people. You're always going to have people that take advantage of, of situations and try to use people for, um, you know, whatever they can. It, it happens all the time. It's unfortunate and, you know, but it is the way it is. Mm-hmm. Yep. Oh, Lordy. Oh, my, my wife is in here. Oh, Lordy. Look out. Got to, got to tighten up. And she's saying, hey, to Kim. Uh, yeah, I got to make sure my stuff is straight. Uh, yeah. yeah. Okay. Tighten up. Oh, and then, so, okay. Um, I, that, yes, you did say that. Something about a muskrat. Um, <laughs> Tanya Burke. Uh, kissy emoji. Cito, got him. Just want to show. I, I was able to catch him in mid-flight. Look at that. I got him. Mm-hmm. How he got in the house? I don't know, but there he is. Here it is. Creating a situation to profit off insurance claim. Yeah. <clears throat> mm-hmm. So again, kind of tying this back in here, what we we're talking about, you know, guys, again, the customer experience, if you say you're going to give cus- amazing customer service, give amazing customer service, mm-hmm. but even more so than the amazing customer service, create the customer experience that the people don't forget. Do mm-hmm. what you say you're going to do. Over the under promise. Follow up and remind them of who you are. Mm-hmm. One of the biggest fails in marketing you will ever have is whenever somebody calls you up and says, I was looking for this company. I don't remember the name of them. You know, gosh. They, they had like a, a blue and white logo. I think the night guy's name was Gray or Jay or, <clears throat> and I'm like, well, what was your, I, I, I'm weird. I could always remember address. And he's like, well, I'm 139 Benton Woods Drive. I'm like, oh, wow, Miss Johnson. Hey, this is Ray. I was the guy that did your house three years ago. And I was thinking, what a horrible failure on marketing that's been. This lady loved us. And then we didn't even send her stuff to remind her who the heck we <clears throat> were. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, company cam, amazing. I think that's an I mean, amazing. Yeah, I think that's a great service, by the way. Quarterly and you can share that and all that. So, quarterly email so, at minimum. Yeah, even if it's just a phone call, if it's um, if you have somebody in the office that can make the phone calls, that's generally great. Um, mm-hmm. And I know I've heard arguments that well, I don't want to do that because sometimes you get people that just want to complain. They right. wouldn't complain if I didn't call them, so I prefer to just send them a letter or you know an email or whatever. You know, I, I mean, if you're worried about people that are complaining, that's kind of the point of doing that, right? And to give that great, great customer experience and making sure that people get what they part, yep. you know, what they paid for partly. Yep, company cam saved our tail. Huge, yep, cheap insurance company cam, 100%. I've heard this, you know, a lot of times with guys. Um, what was the one that we did? Um, Doug, they were a sponsor for us for, for a couple of times. Um, not response a bid. Oh, goodness. They, they ran some specials to our members, um, and I'm, I can't remember it now, but they would allow you to do the voice voicemail bombs where you could go oh. and it would, it would allow you to, to leave a voicemail to, to people without it ringing through to their phone, which was kind of cool technology right mm-hmm. there. And you could do, hey, this is Ray Spray Wash. Just uh, wanted to let you know anniversary of your house wash is coming up, you know, soon. And uh, love to send Jim. That's it. Thank you, Mitchell. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't hear much about Sin Jim, but then again, I'm not in in that market so much. Anymore. Right, right, right. I'm in a little bit different market now. I was going to say Sin Jim, but I wasn't positive because that it's been that's been a long time ago with that. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. But I know people that used it absolutely loved it and had great mm-hmm. results from it. But again, I mean, it's the the biggest thing about so many of these things, Doug, is what do you actually use? I mean, you can have 
I tell you what, I could subscribe to Company Cam right now. If I was a washer, I could subscribe. That was my beautiful wife, by the way. Mm -hmm. I could subscribe to Company Cam, but if I never actually held the phone up and went click, 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 click at job sites, you know what? It doesn't really matter. None of these tools, I could have an XJet on my truck, but if I never plugged it in, it doesn't matter if I have an XJet or not. I could have SendGem, but if I never sent anybody the brownies or if I never did the right. voicemail bombs or the radius bomb on the, the things, it doesn't really matter. So that's probably where a lot of us fail is... Um, you know, I did Broadly for years and Broadly got us up to uh, like, you know, 200 reviews in Tallahassee, 150 reviews. I mean, went from from like 15 reviews to, to a boatload of reviews out there. Mm -hmm. And also Tanya and, 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 and the office staff asking for them. But, you know, it's only as any tool you have is only as good as what you, you're, you're applying, is if you, use it. Mm -hmm. you know. We say, we say that about, um, you know, certifications. There's always arguments about certifications in the industry. And by the way, since Ray did his, I got to show you mine. That's my wife. Oh, yeah. they're making, yep. So, uh, you know, certifications, we have arguments about certifications in the industry kind of a thing. And, and the whole point of that is, yeah, certifications are absolutely junk. They're worthless. They're useless. They, they mean nothing if you don't use them. Yeah. Right. If you if I mean, w w what good does any education do you if you're not going to use the education? No, to that's whatsoever, you know? Yeah. So yes, um, you have to use it in order to make it have value to you. That's what broadly is, is, is about reviews. I mean, it'll it creates a link and then it goes to it, it figures whenever the link goes to your customer and it integrates with House Call Pro. And whenever it goes to that that customer's uh, email, whatever they typically add reviews in be it Yelp or Google or, or Facebook. That's what's going to open up um, out there. Yeah. What's Gene saying? Gene saying there's so much technology out there today. Utilize it. A simple, quick video sent via text message is so, so powerful. Uh, we, we now have personal videos implemented into our email proposals. Start simple and keep improving it. You know Absolutely. what? The power of videos and the power of just connecting with your customers on a regular basis is ex I mean, you, you'd be amazed at where that goes. Right. I mean, and, and to me, I think, yeah, the videos are a great way to uh, very much so personalize something and mm -hmm. it, it makes it a very personal thing. Very. Absolutely. Yeah. Anyhow. You know, I used to, I, one of the stories I always told when I was teaching a lot was years ago, we were, we, I was just probably 30 years ago, you know, realtors always have the home warranties that, that, you know, they could sell. And, and I'm in a, a group called Hobbs Herder that kind of, they pioneered the personal marketing and in, 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 for realtors back 30 years ago, like where it was not just the agency, it's the picture of the realtor and marketing to their strengths and weaknesses. And we're at a, a, a symposium and like a three day symposium. And, and back then, I mean, this is 1990 something and it was, you know, $1,500 a person. It was big money back then to go to this and, you know, probably be $5,000 today. And realtors from all over the nation were in this room, you know, it was a hundred thousand dollar room. If you looked at, at tuitions, and this lady got up, you know, what makes you unique? And the lady got up and she literally said, I have a home warranty. And, and people were literally snickering going, oh, you have a home warranty. You know, everybody has a home warranty. I mean, every realtor can sell a home warranty out there. They pay you 50 bucks, you know, for selling a home warranty. Mm -hmm. And this lady then, she, she held up a Homes and Liam magazine back whenever, you know, remember real, realtors used to advertise mm -hmm. in print magazines. Mm -hmm. And she had a, a four-page... What was huh? that called? It was called Homes. Was it Homes and Gardens? Homes and, Gardens? Land. Homes and Homes Land. Land. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And she had a four-page spread in Homes and Lands, and it was buying a house in Scottsdale, Arizona, buy protected. Still remember it, you know, and it was talking about you buy, you get a free home warranty with every purchase, you know, whenever you get from the Betty Sue Muck and Fudge team and blah, 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 blah. 
And it turns out that this lady was like a $15 million a year producer, which in today's terms would be probably a $50 million, yeah. $60 million a year producer. I mean, a big time real, I mean, a big time production person. Mm -hmm. um, it, it was huge. And she was literally just taking something that everyone, every realtor, realtor had, every realtor had access to a home warranty, but she was making that simple little thing the basis of her marketing campaign, mm -hmm. and it worked bigly for her. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So I don't know who this is, Facebook user saying, best thing I've done recently is have a large document template for every quote. I sent it to Doug a while ago. It covers runoff, property protection, before and after photos from similar jobs, and even some info about our company. And, you know, in today's day and age with, with emails and, and all that kind of thing, it is so, so stinking simple to do that. Um, right. And once you have it, you just, you can, you, you just add it to your, to your, uh, to your invoice template. You can have some to your proposal template, to your uh, marketing temp, you know, whatever it is, you can have different ones. And, Again, though, part of that is you got to track whatever is working and what isn't working. And if you get feedback on something, you know, making sure that you're uh, addressing that feedback and not just allowing it to, you know, continue to fester on and, and, and do bad things for you. So, well, yeah, well, that's yeah, really good having that. Templates, Doug. We used to talk about, you know, one of the things that we yeah. always did was well, went in there into a simple Word document and, and you know, Sunday evenings before we had Sunday family dinners, I would be in the off, like, let's say the, the crew got in time. Where are you at? Where are you at? You know, I was like, Tanya, I'm just trying to finish this up because what my goal was always when we did our big commercial projects on Sunday mornings or on Sundays or weekends, I wanted whenever that product property manager came into their office on Monday yeah, morning on to have a before and after portfolio of the jobs in their email now you know and, and and just five or six before and after photos on there you know front the sides the you know areas of notes and then a, a written report of what happened on there you know hey mr johnson i want to tell you you know we did the the west wing of of of, of, of the college you know blah 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 here are some photographs of, of the job now of that what happened then is as we're doing more and more quotes and as we're getting busier and busier now, suddenly, so I do something at FAMU, Florida Agricultural Mechanical University, and then somebody from Tallahassee Community College calls me and says, yeah, we, we want our journalism school washed. I can say, golly, that looks really similar to the business administration school mm -hmm. building over at such and such. Hey, by the way, you know, Mr. Johnson, thank you so much for your inquiry. Uh, we're going to get your quote to you. By the way, your building is very similar to this other building over on another campus over here. I wanted to send you pictures of how that looked. So what does that do? One, it gives a familiarity with their project that we've done similar mm -hmm. stuff. It so lets him do that type of a job, that size stuff. It lets him know that we're a trusted vendor with that other area as with that other entity as well. So, mm -hmm. yeah. absolutely. And building, though, you know, it was thing we talk about all the time is building relationships. Right. And that's what all of this is about as well is is building those relationships and and putting things in place to make sure they know who you are, what you are, why you are. That's all part of that whole customer experience and making sure that they um, they, they want to use your company. Because, again, people buy from people they know, people they like and people they trust. And it's your job to become that person. Right. Or that or that company. Yep. Mike Bay is saying, uh, let's see. Um, we're in the process of making carbonized uh, multi-layered forms to utilize in the continuity of three stage forms uh, with our letterhead. Yeah. I used to do that as well with uh, um, all of our papers. You know, we had a three page process and do things, but we moved away from that though, you know, with house call probably wound up moving away from that. It, Tanya used to always, so we had the three, the, the carbonless form and we had the white, the pink and the yellow and Tanya always, you know, so the white was what get, went to the customer the, the pink was what, or yellow was what went with the crew. The pink is what stayed in there. And Tanya mm -hmm. would, 
boy, I tell you what, if you wanted to aggravate that woman, you don't ever touch her pinks. Don't touch her pink copy because that was what was, was the invoice copy out there. That's what mm -hmm. stayed in the file until it was, it was paid and, and, you know, and then it got pulled out and stuck, you know, and, and at the end of the year, there'd be, you know, a, a two, three, I still remember doing a video over on, on one of the old, you know, I had, you know, and I compared it to, you know, I had this many estimates this year that weren't accepted, but we had this many that were completed and done out there, you know, and, and right. you know, and I always look at that and say, you know, compared to the old baseball, you're not going to make home runs unless you take a swing at the plate. Yeah. Right. Yeah. That's, that's it with us and our commercial jobs. Right. I mean, most of our commercial jobs came from, you know, cold calls really. And, you know, walking in the door and, or, um, you know, giving the customer experience, here you go, giving the customer experience before they were even the customer. Ready, so, yeah. That's, True. that's a big part of, of, to me, the customer experience is it starts before they even become a customer, giving them the right information, giving them. And for me, you know, you and I have talked about it a lot of times on here where, you know, we, we pick up the phone or we shoot an email and it'll say, uh, hey, Ray, um, you know, just wanted to let you know I was driving by and happened to notice one of your tires was flat on one of your trucks. You yeah. know, I saw it. It was truck number 43 and, you know, whatever. Not mm -hmm. get, you know, my email signature is there. He's going to figure out who I am just by my email signature, right. but I'm not trying to sell him anything. Right. I'm starting a relationship and I'm starting with a customer experience that they know, oh, hey, this guy's watching out for me. And, you know, I just, I didn't even ask him for an estimate, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's true. You're just being the friendly guy, you know? Mm -hmm. Well, Doug, yep, it's not. Nice. You are. Guys, thank y'all so much. We appreciate you. We need to sign out here. Respect our uh, hour-long uh, time here. Thank you all for uh, signing in and joining in with us tonight. Um, keep Israel in your prayers. And um, also Aaron Ritchie and uh, Adam Ferrara's family. Yeah. Uh, please yeah, be definitely. with them. What's this last thing that Gene's saying? Create videos to answer basic questions for residents. Oh, yeah. Create a web page. 100%. Doug or Gene, I totally recommend that about the, you know, and, and there's something else you can do too. Now, whenever you have on Clean by Gene Golden Eagle subdivision, where you've let people know what days you're going to be in there. Now, when the people from Silver Falcon start talking to you, you can say, oh, by the way, here's what we've done. And you give them that link that's still active. Um mm -hmm. And they say, oh, Absolutely. wait a minute, they do Golden Eagle. Holy cow, look what look what they've done here out there. And, you know, why wouldn't we at Silver Falcon want to do that as well? You know, it's funny, not to, I don't want to keep us on too much longer, but that was one of the things that helped me grow my business as well, where I would take videos, right? Like commercial projects, especially, I would go around, you know, I would take all my pictures, but then when I would get back to the office, I would take those pictures and I would convert them into a, a video. And I think I used PowerPoint to do that. Um, I don't remember anymore, but I can't tell you how many times I would get that. I mean, I, I know that there's a church that we still do to this day. We, um, you know, that uh, I remember that the the lady telling me, she goes, once I watched the video, I knew you, you, your company was the only company that, that um, we wanted, period. And, and really, it, and it took those important aspects that nobody else cared about, nobody else showed, nobody, it personalized that it gave them that customer experience that they wanted. And it was a game changer for them. You can still go to the spray wash channel online or spray wash channel on YouTube that a lot of guys are watching on right now. And just look, look up some of the old videos of neighborhoods that we did or projects that we did. And I can't tell you how many property managers we we would send them those links on youtube mm -hmm. uh for them to look at it and they go wow you know that that's what you did there wow that's absolutely amazing you know mm -hmm. um right. and, and you know and even more incredible doug is back whenever you were doing it they didn't even have color film yet so you had to like go and hand color in all those those photographs right between you know there are some people i you know, Thank <laughs>
<laughs> You're not that much younger than me, punk. You know what? That I, 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 I'm going to end it with this. My wife is a world champion jujitsu, right? Well, she, I hear you. she took gold. She is the world champion in her age and weight division in Brazilian jujitsu. Now, uh, I can't wait to for us to go on a little outing yeah. together. With my wife. See Becky looking at me and going, "Oh, she's going to put you down, boy." Yeah, tell her that was a short joke. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nope, uh, I got it. <laughs> <laughs> Doug, good night, buddy. Good, good night, good as always. guys. Thank y'all. We appreciate y'all. Take you. care. Peace. Night. Oh goodness.